it's got a really good balance of not too sweet, not super dry. So it's probably drier than a lot of rosés in comparison. Probably why I like this, honestly. Gosh, that's so good. So good. Such a nice balanced rosé, especially for the price. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of It's Just Grapes. The wine show dedicated to opening up the world of wine to regular folks just like you, using wine you can get pretty much anywhere across the country. My name's Kyle, I'm your host, and today I brought with me one of my favorite rosés in general. This is Dark Horse 2019. I've had Dark Horse rosé many, many years. This is actually the first time I bought the 2019 vintage. Vintage means year, by the way. Um, and this one's kind of a dead giveaway of what to expect. Dry, bright, crisp, right on the front of the label. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Again, another cool thing about this, it's a twist off cap, so you don't really have to worry about storage issues with the cork. Has a nice pink color. Ah, oh, that's terrific. I'm a big fan of rosés. Now, curious though, I remember reading that this says it's supposed to be dry. I wouldn't really call this overly dry. Uh, it's got a really good balance of not too sweet, not super dry. So it's probably drier than a lot of rosés in comparison. Probably why I like this, honestly. I've, again, had Dark Horse many, many times, Dark Horse Rosé specifically. It's a very, very easy to drink, very flavorful wine. I love the taste of this. This is something that I could probably drink in a day without really even sweating it. <laughs> Such a terrific taste, uh, very fruity, very easy to drink, not overly, um, it doesn't really knock you down, it's not super alcoholic, it's just a really good crisp rosé, especially for the price. Let's go, I'm gonna cap this so I can read the label with a little bit more safety than in the past. Dark Horse, the unexpected winner. For us, winning means bringing you exceptionally crafted and well-balanced wine that over-delivers on your expectations. We do this by working side-by-side -side with 400 of California's finest grape growers to earn the first pick of their harvests. And we taste our wine over 100 times, that's easy, before you pour your first glass. The result, a refreshingly dry rosé with notes of fresh fruit and a bright, crisp finish. Cheers, Dark Horse Rosé. Yes, so obviously it sounds like they're not just growing their own grapes. They're picking the best grapes. They're picking the varieties that they want that deliver this taste. And kind of the interesting about that is, interesting thing about that is it still has a 2019 vintage on it. So they're using grapes all from 2019, almost making a rosé blend, if you will. And I mean, honestly, it just provides exceptional taste. Already gonna have to top this off. Um, I did have this in my refrigerator. You don't have to necessarily have this like ice cold, but it's a good idea to have it cold in general. As you see, bottle's starting to sweat here quite a bit. Gosh, that's so good. So good, such a nice balanced rosé, especially for the price. Uh, California rosé, by the way. I know a lot of people like drinking specifically California wine, uh, just kind of personal preference and you know, keeping it within the country. Great option, and you can get this anywhere. Um, I picked this up at my local Schnucks, which is just a grocery store chain here in the Midwest. I don't even remember what it cost. You're gonna see a video pop up, probably showing how much it cost. It's worth it. It's under 10 bucks. You, you probably wanna buy two of these. Uh, a lot of times I do buy two of these at a time because I'll get home and I'll drink the first one within a day or two. And then I'm like, man, I wanted to have that. So I'll have a second one. Again, Dark Horse Rosé 2019 Vintage. Uh, I've had previous years, they all taste pretty much the same. They're all exceptional. And let's revisit. So last week we had a Chardonnay on here that I called uh, Flavor by Fire. That's the Toasted Head Barrel Aged Chardonnay. As you can see, there's not much left. I probably have another maybe glass and a half in there. Uh, it actually grew on me throughout the week. I drank this another two, two nights after I shot the first video. And with it being just corks like this, I think it kind of knocked off that initial little kind of like, kind of kick in the ass that 
I experienced during the episode. So all things considered, I think the recommendation I made still stands. It's definitely not a mild, calm, easy drinking Chardonnay, but if you want something that has a good flavor, good taste, something different, awesome. Still uh, highly recommended. Again, we'll put a link uh, on YouTube, it'll pop up above me, but we'll put a link to this as well in the description. So I think that wraps up this episode of It's Just Grapes. Again, please subscribe, that way you see these more and more, and it helps the channel grow as well. Please share with your friends, and also, I want you guys comment. What do you want to see? What types of wine? What brands of wine? Is there anything else you want me to add to the show? Uh, different aspects of it, more fun things. Uh, aside from that, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to go edit this video and uh, make some of this liquid disappear. So thanks for tuning in to this edition of It's Just Grapes. We'll see you in the next one.